Once the copy editing process is done, what your next major uh, role will be is to proof the typeset pages. So there'll be a bit of a, I think I can speak generally about the process uh, from press to press and say that uh, the, the period of time between the copy editing and the typesetting is generally a number of months, um, obviously depending on the size of the press and the number of projects going through the um, the managing editorial and production process that time will vary, but in any case, it's a sort of a time for a break for you uh, while we while we take the copy edited manuscript, which you have approved, incidentally, um, and and typeset the work. Um, in order to lead up to that and to allow us to produce a book that looks like something you had envisioned from the outset. Um, we will also be in conversation with you, uh, and this would probably start to happen with your acquisitions editor before uh, you even submit the final manuscript, or it probably ought to, um, to discuss with you how to prepare not only the final text um, to the press's specifications, but also uh, to prepare any illustrations that are going to accompany uh, that text. So if you do have images um, of one sort or another, or graphs and figures and so on, each publisher will have a, a series of house um, specifications that they'll want you to follow, and your acquisitions editor in consultation with um, either the managing editorial department or the production department will be able to guide you um, so that you're submitting to us the necessary, generally electronic files um, to suit our needs. And so when the manuscript has been typeset, you're then set, um, a sent a set of page proofs and you're also sent, again, the copy edited manuscript so that it is, uh, at this point, your job to proof those typeset pages. And what that means essentially is that you read it line by line next to the copy edited manuscript to ensure that no errors were introduced in the course of typesetting. Uh, that all changes approved by you uh, with respect to the copy edit were in fact integrated into the typeset version of your manuscript. And I think, again, it's safe to say that on the whole, unless there's something exceptional about the manuscript, uh, you will only see one set of typeset pages. Um, however, the press may see several sets beyond that, depending again on the complexity of the project. Um, so at that point, you really have seen it until for the last time until you see it as a printed book. So that leaves you uh, in the exciting position of waiting patiently again <laughs> for us to uh, to do our thing. Right. And at that point when it rolls off the press, you're handed over from the editorial and and uh, production departments to the marketing department. What will basically happen first, the probably the first time you'll hear from a marketing department at a scholarly press is they'll send you a form. It'll be um, maybe about, it's kind of like marketing 20 questions. Um, and it's about, you know, five or six pages of a Word document. And there's all these questions that they'll ask. And you'll probably see it and they'll be like, man, I'm really busy right now and I've got all this work to do and it's come at the end of the semester when I've got a stack of marking to do and I've got this conference paper that I have to hand in, uh, but it's really a really important document and we try to stress that when we send these out. Um, it's basically called like an author information sheet or a, a marketing questionnaire or something like that and it basically will ask you not only just you know the simple things like birth date and citizenship and uh, you know your, your current address and how we can get a hold of you at work and at home uh, but it will ask you things like uh, where you'd like the book sent for reviews. So we know that you're specialists in these areas, and some of the books that you know scholarly publishing puts out are inevitably very specialized. Uh, you know the discipline better than we do. You know we're knowledgeable, but you're the specialists, you're the experts. So we want you to let us know where you think we should send review copies. Now these are to journals. Uh, if you have media contacts, we'll ask about that too. Um, we'll ask about uh, who you'd like uh, direct mail sent to, just email alerts, 
list serves, things like that. It's really important to provide complete information because we're really busy in marketing. We, you know, I know Miguel Queen says about 120 books a year. UTP does about 160 a year. It's a lot. It's like a what, a book every like 1.5 working days, or so. <laughs> Maybe every every two working days. So we really ask for your expertise in, in letting us know where you think we should um, focus our efforts. A lot of that's conferences, you know, Congress, of course, we're you know always coming to. Um, but you know, are there any um, more specialized conferences? Say that only there's 200 attendees. Let us know when the next one is. Uh, so that's the first thing that will go out. It will, you'll, we'll ask you a series of questions. Please be as complete and thorough as you can. Um, the book then uh, is still probably in the works. So it's still in the production stage basically at this point. So then the book actually comes out. Now, marketing scholarly works is a challenge because Unfortunately, sometimes our you know surrounding world is somewhat superficial and more confu you know concerned with Justin Bieber's new haircut um, rather than you know the, some of us care about that too. Well, you know I care. Some of are doing research on this. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> um, but you know it's hard sometimes, depending on the nature of the work try and find attention to it. You know, I, I know McGill Queens some time ago had an advertising campaign. I'm probably missing the wording here, but it's basically like books you'll never ever find on Oprah's list. You know, it, it's important to be reasonable and to focus your efforts on tangible goals. You know, some books do have that crossover that Kyla was speaking of before. And um, you know, we're really concerned, you know, with the limited book space that there is in the review pages these days. They're, they keep shrinking, so we're all looking for online forums, and we're looking to get books in the media outside of, off, like, off the book page, you know, in the lifestyle <laughs> section sometimes, or, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the op-eds, you know, sometimes we'll ask you to do an op-ed, you know, uh, an opinion piece in a newspaper, all for that last line that says your name and is the author of, insert title. <laughs> um, so we ask to be reasonable about a lot of these things. And some, sometimes the books really catch fire and they do well, but keep in mind, there's never going to be a bestseller. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not going to be on the, the, the top of the charts. Um, it, it will do well in your field if everything goes well. Um, but um, I'm just thinking of other things. Oh, review journals. The nature of scholarship is slow. We all kind of know that from having to research and write about these things. And the journals are really important to get books to. But we do stress patience there again. Um, because it will often take two to three years before a review even appears. People and that's, really get old and die. We have a, yeah. at least one. Yeah. I don't know how old you get. Somebody no. died. Wait for <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I got a review yesterday you know, sent to my you know, a care sheet. <laughs> as a PDF that was sent to my email account, you know, letting me know that this book's been reviewed. The book was published in 2004. And it's not our fault. We sent the books out. We wanted them to be reviewed, but sometimes it's difficult to find the right reviewer, and the journal maybe is having some staff problems. It's beyond our control. Um, but sometimes, you know, a book catches life later on. So uh, it's, it's interesting to track the progress. But, you know, exhibits at book conferences are really helpful and word of mouth and uh, you know email alerts and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, <laughs> it's a challenge and it is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.